Hello. Welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture with PATH Presenter and the Digital Pathology Association, which uh, does continue to offer complimentary memberships to members from the uh, developing world and those in training. Um, our program today uh, focuses uh, on a topic in GI pathology um, and uh, begins with uh, the story of a, uh, a patient actually fairly well known uh, to myself, uh, a 50-year-old woman who has uh, uh, iron deficiency, which has been somewhat persistent, uh, has a past history of diverticulosis, uh, she's on the obese side, and uh, she also has a remote history of asthma, which we'll see plays into the importance uh, here in this situation. So uh, more recently, she has begun to develop some upper GI, uh, some sort of upper GI symptoms, more sort of crampy abdominal pain, um, a little bit of, um, um, you know, distress, intermittent uh, sort of changes um, that uh, she doesn't seem to have a great explanation for. Um, and so uh, in consulting with her physician, they determined that an upper endoscopy may be helpful to evaluate her symptoms, uh, which is done. At the time of the uh, endoscopy, they find uh, a few areas of sort of erosive change. And uh, here's one of them. Uh, as we see here, this is small bowel biopsy. We see the villus architecture here in several of these fragments. But notice here that in this fragment and here again, uh, we're, we're losing some of the architecture, and it looks, even though we're cut on a bit of a bias, that we have some sort of erosive changes. Note how the glands get, get smaller and so forth. Um, additionally, as we look at this here, we see that there is uh, um, a bit more eosinophilia, if you will, than usual. Um, so uh, looking down here, um, we can see that there's just quite a few eosinophils uh, in the stroma. Um, and, uh, of course, we encounter eosinophils in the lamina propria in the bowel very frequently, um, but uh, they're usually modest in number, um, not associated with ulceration or erosion, and they usually don't invade uh, into the uh, glandular or epithelial component, which uh, we see in several instances here. Uh, if we look more subtly, you can see these granular changes that are not just uh, PANF cells. Um, so this raises consideration about uh, what we do when we see too many eosinophils um, in a sample, um, and particularly when uh, we're seeing them involving uh, the epithelium in this way. Um, of course, uh, systemic eosinophilia is uh, somewhat different sometimes than a localized issue, but I think it's uh, important to consider when we see uh, eosinophilia in the in the blood, for example, we think of uh, uh, drug or allergic reactions. We may think about systemic infections or infestations with uh, parasites and so forth. Uh, neoplasia can produce <clears throat> par paraneoplastic syndromes, which have uh, excess eosinophils. And then many of the connective tissue diseases uh, um, and so forth, autoimmune diseases, may have areas uh, which uh, provoke uh, that. And Addison's disease has also been associated with this. On the local side of things, uh, of course, again, parasitic uh, infection can be a possibility. Um, <clears throat> other allergens, uh, contact dermatitis, uh, drug eruptions, and so forth, very frequently associated with e tissue eosinophilia. Crohn's disease uh, is also uh, manifest in some circumstances by an evident increase in uh, eosinophils. And then there are so-called primary eosinophilic diseases, such as eosinophilic esophagitis and eosinophilic gastroenteritis. Uh, these may be associated with an antigen or allergen, of course, but oftentimes that is unidentified uh, in the specific instance. Looking back at her uh, biopsies again, uh, this is one from the stomach. Um, and uh, again, we see uh, in this situation, um, a, uh, a bit more eosinophilia to the, uh, to the tissue here. Uh, as we look uh, here on higher magnification, we see that the uh, inner the lamina propria is just uh, quite packed with eosinophils. 
And while you can see occasional rare eosinophils in the gastric mucosa, uh, to see this number is uh, very unusual um, and should raise consideration of uh, eosinophilic disease. Uh, in fact, if we look here at uh, this piece here, uh, I think we'll see uh, a number of situations where we have uh, intraepithelial eosinophils as well as uh, the uh, well, and I don't see them as well here. Let's look a little bit further over here. Um, not as not as prominent here, um, but uh, there are in some of the fragments. And let's just see if we can find the right fragment here. Uh, quite a number of uh, intraepithelial uh, eosinophils. Here we go. This is the piece over here. Uh, that is the, perhaps the worst. Um, and so uh, this uh, particular uh, disorder uh, involving more than one site uh, would be uh, highly consistent with uh, eosinophilic gastroenteritis. Yeah, I think here you can see uh, eosinophils crowding into the uh, intraepithelial compartment uh, here in many instances in this uh, tissue fragment here. So be sure to look at all the fragments that may be somewhat variable from uh, place to place. So uh, considering that this is eosinophilic gastroenteritis, uh, let's think about uh, this disorder um, and what do we know about it? Well, it does occur in a wide age range, children to adults. Uh, it is associated with pain, cramps especially. Uh, it can occur really anywhere from the uh, esophagus on down to the uh, large bowel although stomach and uh, duodenum are probably most frequent. Uh, peripheral eosinophilia may be present, but is only there about half the time. And as in our patient, uh, a history of uh, um, asthma or other atopic uh, uh, situation is uh, fairly frequent. Um, the eosinophils may infiltrate any level of the bowel wall from the mucosa out to the adventitia, um, obviously, we don't uh, routinely biopsy the muscularis and adventitia, so we only see them primarily on biopsies uh, involving the uh, uh, mucosa. Um, and this is really a diagnosis of exclusion. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> as in our situation, um, we will make a correlative comment uh, that other causes of uh, eosinophilia should be excluded, parasitic infection, uh, drug eruptions, and so forth. Um, not, un, not surprisingly, the symptoms can wax and wane, uh, probably based on exposure to the uh, antigen uh, in, causing the uh, reaction. Uh, and because of that, sometimes uh, patients will uh, experiment with restrictive diets um, to eliminate various components that may be the uh, putative antigens and steroids, and occasionally some uh, eosinophil stabilizing uh, drugs um, and so forth may also uh, be effective in relieving the symptoms. So uh, that's uh, our summary for today. Our final sign out diagnosis in this case was uh, uh, increased tissue eosinophilia, uh, most consistent with eosinophilic gastroenteritis, but please exclude other uh, po potential uh, uh, definable etiologies that could have a similar appearance, such as parasitic infection and so forth. Well, thank you very much for joining me. I apologize if you watched this the first time without sound um, and uh, certainly hope that uh, you'll uh, continue to uh, uh, share your uh, comments. Uh, if you like this, uh, please uh, hit the like button. That thumbs up uh, is always very helpful. Uh, and of course, we hope that uh, you'll join us uh, on future programs. Uh, we enjoy making these and hope that they're useful to you and provide a perspective and balance and uh, enrichment uh, of your educational experience. So until next time, thanks so much for joining me.